Again, to review, you go down to two individual user, then you type my name, then you chat. I'm the only one that can see everyone's chats. If you want to practice that. I think some of you are doing it. There, Eric's got it. There we go. Got a couple people. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm losing my voice a little bit here. I've been talking a lot in the last few days. So forgive me <laughs> if I sound a little hoarse. <laughs> I'll be resting my voice tonight. But welcome, everyone. If you're here, I'm going to talk today about shorting. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to talk today about some of the trades we've done in the last few weeks. And we can go back and forth between the charts and the presentation that I have prepared. We can look at some of the things we did today. Um, and again, it's, it's a really interesting time, I think, to trade right now because, again, the market's been moving higher. But not everything is going hand in hand with the market. So one of the reasons that I like to short and I prefer to short is because I find that shorting stocks gives me an edge. Many people are going long right now. They're quote unquote buying every dip because the market's been moving up. But that's not going to last. It never, never does. And that's how people get caught and trapped in positions. They might be up one day and then all of a sudden the next day they're down because they're just going with trades that are going with the market or trades, I should say, stocks, individual stocks, whatever companies they are that are going with the market. Uh, somebody to me, I was talking on the phone with somebody today was telling me, they're like, oh, I'm in this thing and it's going. I took a look at it. It was a terrible long position. It was a horrible looking chart. It was a weird stock, something really cheap. But I thought, gosh, the only reason this stock is rallying today is because, of course, the market was up. And if this person doesn't exit this trade by the end of today, they're going to lose, you know. And that's how people do lose. So for whatever reason, people, again, prefer to go long. And what I mean people, I mean most retail traders. They prefer to go long because the concept of going long, buying low, selling high, is something that people can wrap their head around. But... It's not that hard to understand how to short. It's really not that hard at all. You're basically betting that a stock is going to drop. And say, for example, you have a stock. If the stock costs $20 a share and you short 1,000 shares and the stock price drops to $19, then you'd be up $1,000. So when you're shorting the stock, there's different ways to short, to take the position, to actually enter the position. You're basically you know, betting, like I said, that the stock price will drop. How does a stock drop? The stock can drop because people are dumping it, they're selling, selling the long position, or another way a stock will drop is people are shorting it. And you have a lot of shorts, and when they're shorting it, they're pushing it. They're pushing the stock price down, okay? And as we go along here today, we'll talk about that. And again, if you have any questions, you can write it in the room. If you're still not sure how to type in the room, you can email me questions and I'll, and I'll check my email as we go along here. But hopefully everyone knows how to type, okay? You can watch me on TV. I'm around. You can call me, 929-3200-GAP. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you have questions this evening or tomorrow about anything I do, and you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, or Skype. So we're starting out here, we're still at the very beginning of the year. Really, we're still at the very beginning of earnings season. Earnings season started about a week ago. And again, last week was a short week for the market. Uh, we were closed for last Monday for a Martin Luther King holiday. But it's still early enough in the year to get started and to have a fantastic year. You know, January, beginning of the year, is a great time to set goals for yourself, New Year's resolutions, whatever you want to call them. Maybe you're a smoker, you want to quit smoking, maybe you want to get an exercise regimen. All these things are good to start in the beginning of the year. And the sooner you start them, the better you're going to feel about yourself. If you have something that you've been wanting to do for a long time, and you put it off, put it off, put it off, that it kind of bothers you. It's the back of your mind. that It's something like, oh, I've got to do this. I've wanted been doing this. I've got to get it done. 
and again, I'm not a typically a person that procrastinates, but I do have things that I want to get to that I'd put off to that I have on my agenda for 2024 that I want to accomplish and get done myself. So I'm going to take my own advice. I'm giving you advice about that. I'm taking my own advice this year. Things I got to clean up, get off my plate and finally get organized for this calendar year. I have the stats in here, which seemed like a long time ago, 2023, but these are the stats from all of last year for the day trades. We were closed the end of the year for the holidays. These are trades on margin that I called in the live room, which you would have had to be there to get with an average risk of $3,000 per trade. That means that the risk, the difference between the entry and the stop was around three grand. Okay, so you can risk less than that in day trades. You could risk more. Then these are the results last year for options. We're actually really on a good pace this year to do options, even though it's not even a month into the year. We've had some great calls, some really big trades and some good setups. So my expectation this year is we will make more money both in day trades and options this year. We'll see how the year goes. Again, we're not even into February yet, but so far so good for the year. I don't have the stats for last Thursday and Friday or today in here, but this was up until the 16th. Again, this is an average risk in the live room of around $3,000 per trade. And we are gonna talk about some day trades. You need a margin account to do the day trades in the room. And when I say day trades, I mean you're shorting the stock, like taking 1,000 shares or 2,000 shares on margin, not a put. A put is an option. Here are the options. This, is, this isn't all the trades I've closed out so far this year, but this is up through the Tesla one we just did last week this is a larger risk for me so i'm risking more of my options that's why this number is bigger i'm risking of an average of eight thousand dollars per trade a little bit more in some your risk should be the same in almost every trade that you take and again the reason for that is so you have consistent results as well because you could take five trades you could have five good trades five winners and then you could take one loser as trade six and if that loser is oversized, the five winners could all be wiped out with one loser if you oversize yourself. And one of the classic mistakes that traders make, and I know this from teaching people for as long as I have been, is that their risk is not consistent or they don't use stops. They don't use stops. So it is important to use a stop. And again, my risk is basically my stop in my, in my option. Okay, so when I enter an options trade, if I risk $8,000, that's all I can lose. If I enter a day trade, okay. Um, Afua, I'm just turning your video off here. I'm sorry, I just saw that. I just, I want everybody to listen to me. So I have everybody's cams off. Um, what was I just saying? Oh, we were talking about risk. Oh, we we're talking about stops. We we're talking about stops. If I take a stop in a day trade, okay, then I lose. I may retake it, I may do something else. In an option, my risk is my stop. So that is the stop, okay? So if you take an options trade, if you buy a put, okay, if you buy a call, if I, if I call a call, if you lose, the whole thing goes bust, you are never up. That's it. Now, if you kill the train, if you take a train and buy a put in an option and it's down 50% and you want to kill it, fine. But you need to know that that trade may go on to work. So I don't kill my options. I let every trade play out. And I think you're better off lowering your risk to make sure that you can let every trade play out in reference to the options. But for my day trades, again, these trades here, and so what we're going to talk about today, I do use a stop. It's a limit order stop. I call it a hard stop meaning I'm gonna get hit out, I'm gonna lose if it goes through the number. I can retake it if I want, but I don't have an unlimited amount of uh, reach on this where I have to set a fixed risk, okay? Um, Selena's, Serena's asking, are you using limit order or stop limit order? It's a, it's a, it's a limit order. It's a limit order, but it's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna hit you out. So again, if, if I say 60, and again, if we're shorting tests or whatever, and you have the stop, and you have to know we're doing Tesla, and it might be 209.60. If it hits over 209.60 and we're short Tesla, which we did do a short in Tesla today, then you would be stopped out. Now Tesla worked today, actually, as a short, it was a late short. I should have done that in the morning, actually, but it's a limit order stop. Uh, ben Cannon is talking about 2024. I I. 
I think I have trades in here for 2024, but we're, we'll, we'll go through this. I, do, I think I do have some in here. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over some trades from January, if that's what you mean. And again, so far today, we're really, this isn't even through the totals of today. Um, so it's been a good start to the year. Why has it been a good start to the year? When you say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Melissa, you're shorting, the market's making new highs, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, it makes perfect sense. Because again, anything that you do to make money in the market, you don't have to be with the market direction if you're an active trader. This is not about investment. This isn't about long-term investments. Long-term investments, you might have some really good performer stocks in your uh, retirement portfolio right now. Apple's finally getting a lift. The SPY made new highs. We're active traders. The whole idea of being active in any position, whether it's a long or short, is you want a big move in that, and you, you have to be able to get in and get out and book the money because you can't wait forever and ever and ever and ever and ever for the stock to go because then you're not active. So particularly if you're doing this where you want to do this, where you're going to make a living doing this, you have to have moves all the time. And, and I said this before, I think it was an email I did over the weekend or a couple of days ago. You really got to love what you do for a living. And let's just say you're like, well, I'm doing this on the side. I'm doing this as a part-time thing right now. And if I can make this work, I'm going to do it full time. You have to love what you're doing if you're training. You have to love what you're doing for your job because you're going to do it for hours and hours and hours every day for a long, long time. I do love shorting. I really love doing it, particularly because it, stocks move fast. I also love making money. So it's exciting to me to make a couple thousand dollars really quick in a trade, even if I have to be in the trade for half an hour or longer. It's exciting to make some of these profits we've made in options trades, holding the trades overnight. Huge trades. Again, my risk is, is, is big, but you could have risked one tenth of the risk that I risked, and it would still be a big trade because it's about the percentage. It's about the return on investment. So making money is exciting to me. I find that fun. I love that. So, you know, if you're doing something where you feel like it's a grind, like you can barely get out of bed in the morning and you just hate every single day and you live for the weekends and that, you know, that mentality can really not only age you, because it will, you know, it, it also just brings you down in everything else that you want to do in life, relationships, you know, your, your overall health. You want to feel good and excited about what you want to do. Like I'm excited about a couple things this week. I'm excited because we have a big earnings this week in Netflix. Not only is that going to do something, again, I'm not in a Netflix position. It's going to gap. Okay, we're going to talk about gaps in a minute because that's what I focus on. It's going to have a large move. That stock usually does. And it's going to move the market, which could be very exciting. Very exciting. So we could get some other plays, consecutive plays with Netflix to do any market stocks with Netflix because Netflix is out. I think it's Wednesday night. I want to say it's Wednesday night or Tuesday night. It's, it's not tonight, but it's an exciting week for that. So I'm looking forward to that. Again, getting up in the morning and looking forward to something that you want to train and want to do to make money, you know, really helps you because you got you got to earn money for a living, whatever it is you do. And so it's important if you love it. Now, what do I do specifically though? I rank gaps. So if you're here today and you're not familiar with what I do, I get up in the morning and I process in the pre-market what stocks are gapping. Now, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple, right? Most everything gaps every single day. <laughs> it's very rare that something would close at 3202 and open at 3202. That would be what I would call a neutral gap. But if something closes at 3202 and gaps up to 3203, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going long it or even rating it, okay? That in that example would be a bullish gap, okay? And I don't look at percentages before anybody even asks. That's not something that I even, even consider, all right? That's not part of my rating system at all. But I process and do the pre-work by looking at and rating the gap going through a checklist. Checklists are extremely important for anything you do where you have to make sure that everything's okay. 
Uh, one of the reasons that Boeing has fallen this year, unfortunately, is it's had some mechanical failures and some near accidents. Luckily, no one's been killed. I mean, luckily. But if you're a pilot, okay, or those pilots, they have checklists that they have to check off everything to make sure that everything's been done before the plane takes off. So again, these things are very important. Your, tra your, your job as a trader to take the amount of money you have and risk it to make more money is just as important as the plane taking off and making sure you have fuel and going through all the checks. Again, you don't want to lose your money. Your money is like your bullets. You don't want to run out of bullets. You don't want to run out of cash. And I think a lot of people are too willy-nilly about their trades uh, to 50-50 crap shoots about trades that they take. Again, I talk about this all the time about, about something called conviction. You either have 100% conviction or you don't have 100% conviction. So I either think that this stock is lower or I don't. And if I don't, well, then I'm, I'm not going to waste my bullets in it. Okay, I'm not going to take a trade in it. I'm not going to make money. I'm not even going to take any risk because I don't think it's worth it. So this was one that we did. This was a late trade today, but I'm really, really glad I did it. For some reason, this did not come up on my scanner or I probably would have done it earlier. Anyways, let's go over here. This is a daily chart of Guild. Okay, this was a short. And again, I focus on shorting. Why? Because I get big moves with shorts. I get fast moves with shorts. Again, I have a niche shorting. So despite the market, what it did today, this stock, look at it. It fell off a planet. So up here the day before you have Guild, this was Friday, stock closed above 87, gap down here in the morning, open at 80 and change, open, drop, fell. So again, this is a gap. And if you would learn my system from me, you're going to learn how to rate this gap to determine what? Do you want to short it? <coughs> or maybe you don't want to do anything. Maybe you want to leave it. But you're not going to go long it, okay? So there's only two options for me in the guild, do nothing or short it. Okay, so today this was a short. But it's all about getting a focus. If you have a focus every day, you can be fine and do well and make money with one trade a day. Whether you do it as a day trade, whether you do it as an option. And, and again, it's all about the focus. If you're not prepared to trade before the open, what the heck are you going to focus on? You're going to be scanning on the live day. You're going to be making decisions that you shouldn't be making. You're going to be back and forth again with this 50-50 mentality, which is too much like gambling. Any questions here so far? I was going to say something else and I forgot. Now, this was one from last week. Last week. This was a really big trade. This was another one that took a while to go. Again, for some reason, I hope we get a really fast one tomorrow, but this was Discover. Now, this is a 15 minute. This is DFS, okay? So the stock closed here, gap down. So again, this was Wednesday night. Stock closed up here around 108 and change, okay? This is a 15 minute chart. Open down here in the morning under 102. Okay, this, this was an earnings. I was talking about the fact that it, we're in earnings season now. So this was a bank. We entered it short 115. Now, I actually moved the stop here. So this risk, this risk may seem larger than I said. I moved the stop and I did an add in this. So I did risk more than my normal 3,000 in this because I did an add. Now, this is an advanced concept, <clears throat> which I don't want to get too much into here, but an add is something where you're almost, you're doubling up on the trade and you're adding to the train because you think it's going to have a larger move or a bigger move. And that's what I did here with this. So the average price of this with the ad was 162. And the stock had a really, really, really big drop. Okay. So again, typically looking for a dollar, two dollars, you get three dollars, four dollars. This is a trade though on margin. Now you could have done a put in this. I did not call it put in this. This was a margin trade. You would have needed margin to take this trade. But anyways, here was the gap. Stock closed here, gap down. It rated to short. Open rally, dropped. I wasn't aggressive in this. I weighed in, got the rally. We did it, got the drop, boom. Now today I did see this back, back up today. This was, this is the 15 minute here today. This had a little bit of a rally. But anyways, this is the money move. 
this is the move that you want to do this is all the money that you want to make and this is all that you need as you can see now what if you took half this size what if you took a thousand shares you still see where where this went and i'm just using here if you did the ad if you took 500 500 if you had a total of a thousand shares the drop here you got was so significant in this sell-off that it pained okay so big trade in that now oh here's the daily i did put this in here stock closed up here so this is the gap the stock closed here gap down open rallied dropped okay so again this was a short do i mostly short stocks or options i do both i do both how how many i do in any given calendar year i'd have to you can go back and count them. I, I had all the trades in this lecture. You can go back and count them all. I don't know. I would say I probably tend to do more options just because I might do three or four options on a day where I, I won't on average do three or four day trades at once. And I'm typically doing one day trade a day, maybe more. But I prefer to do one. If I'm doing more than a, one trade in a day in the day trade, I'm probably having a rough morning. If I do one trade and I make money and I'm done, I'm out. Whereas I might put a couple options on because I could give them time to work. But I might not do any options for two days in a row. And then all of a sudden I do five. So, you know, it's, it's whatever works for you. It's an active newsletter if you sign up for the options letter. It's an active trading room if you sign up for the room. You're going to get plenty of trades, so I wouldn't worry about that, whatever you decide to do. But I short stocks, and I buy calls and sell them out to exit, and I buy puts and sell them out to exit, just so you know. Well, the op we are going to go over some options here, Michael. Now, again, I didn't call an option in DFS, but if I had, if I had called it, you should have gotten out that day or the following day or this morning because look what this did. It went boop. So if I had called this, and I'm just making this up, I probably would have called the 100 puts. It probably was a 100 put strike, and you could have done it, and that would have been a profitable trade. But if you didn't get out here, Michael, you had to watch this thing here, and then you would you would have still been up. And if I, if I called a put like that, you would have still been up today. But you got it. You got to you got to get the profit out. You got to take profit. If what size account for what? If you're doing options, you can trade options with a two thousand dollar account. But then your risk has to be probably a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a trade, and no more. If you're doing day trades, you need twenty five thousand for a margin account, or you go prop. You can open up a prop account with $2,500. Your margin's 10 to 1. At a retail place, 4 to 1, you need 25 grand. Do I short only during the day or overnight? I am not doing swing trades, if that's what you're asking me, Zaire, on margin, if that's what you're asking me. I don't know. But when I say a day trade, this is a day trade. This was a trade on margin. When I say an option, we're going to talk about options. It's a, a trade that I will hold overnight, but it is a put, is a put. If I buy a put, I'm not doing a swing trade where I just, like I'm not taking 5,000 shares of anything <laughs> and holding it overnight, okay? And why would I not do that, okay? Why would I not do that? First of all, that just doesn't make any sense in my opinion. And I will tell you this, and I don't want to get too off track here, but most of the people that retail traders that trade the market, most people that trade and that are losing, and most people are losing the trade because they don't know what they're doing and they don't have a strategy that they follow. But guess what's another reason that most traders lose, retail traders, and I'm generalizing here, this may not be any of you, they swing trade, they, they, they stay in trades overnight, and then they're completely upside down the train and they have basically no stop. Do you get what I'm saying? Like they have no stop. So that's a problem because again, I have the stop in. So like, again, this is not something that anybody should do, but let's, I'm just making this up. Say, say you shorted the, the discover. 
say it didn't go. You're like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold this overnight. I'm just going to, I'm going to give it till tomorrow to go. No, that wouldn't be a good idea. So if I'm in something and I don't get stopped or I'm not up money, maybe I'm down, maybe I'm flat, maybe I'm up a little, maybe I'm down and I don't get stopped in it. I got to kill it. I got to kill that trade. I got to get out of it by four because I'm not going to stay in that position with essentially no, you know, unlimited risk overnight. But if I would, I wouldn't be on four to one margin. I'd be on two to one margin or cash, depending on how you have it set up. I don't know what your question is. I don't understand your question, Afua. We're looking at daily charts here. So let's look at BA. Again, this is a gap. Stock close here, gap down. Stock close here, gap down, fell off a cliff. So we did a bunch of trades in this. This is today's BA. Uh, UAL is out, I think, tonight. I don't know what it's doing. Somebody can look it up right now. I think it's reporting tonight. Anyways, this is the options newsletter. If you want to do options, this you get to your email. This gets to your email live. You take the trade when you get it. Most trades I send in the morning in the pre-market. I did send this a little bit late. 10.43 in the morning, the BA245 puts it expired the 12th. This was two weeks ago. This was a really, really nice trade to start out our calendar year of 2024. The risk was $3. Again, size yourself, determine the size. 1,000, 2,000, 500, 20 grand if you want, whatever. I got out of this, I'll go back to the daily and show you. It was a huge profit, over 500% return on in investment. This was a nice trade. So this is what I'm doing to hold a trade. I'm not doing swing trades. This, I have a set risk. Worst case scenario, the trade wouldn't work. This is all I'm gonna lose. If you took a smaller risk, 1,200 for contracts, this is still a lot cheaper way to actually enter a stock like this because the fact is that this is expensive. So if you want a short BA on the live day, you need a margin account. If you, and it's over $200 a share. If you want to buy a put, one put here on this day costs $300. You would need more than $300 to short BA on any day, even to take the smallest size you could. Okay, if UAL is up, then, then it reported up. That sounds like UAL closed at 38.45. We can look at that when we're done. Then BA is going to be up too. BA is, you can look at BA, Eric. Then BA is probably up as well. Uh, Afu was asking somebody about indicators. Again, so I talked to somebody the other day. This, is, this, is, this was the wildest thing I ever heard that told me that they had 600 indicators at one time on their chart. That was the most, I never heard of something like that in my life. That person can't even see the price of the chart, of the, of the, of the stock. Your reliance, you should not be relying on too many indicators. In fact, less is more. But that was the most I ever heard that somebody uses because that person is trying to get something where they never have a, a trade that loses, which is impossible. And that person is hurting themselves by having so many indicators. They're just working against him. Less is more. All you need to know is the price. If you look at the price and can predict where the stock is going to go, you can make money. You don't need a million indicators. You don't need any, actually. But this here, again, looking at the daily chart, I got up in the morning and I rated the gap in BA. Now, the day I called this trade was here. This is earlier in the year, the one we're talking about. This was a nice gap and really just a great call. Did I know this stock would go on the last day of expiration here? to this number, which I did not hold this to the last day, but you actually could have. Did I know it would go to 220, whatever it went that day? No. I got out of the trade here. I thought it was a good exit. But this move was the overnight move that captured the profit. We bought the put there, and then this was Friday, this was Monday, and then everybody was up a lot of money when they got up because the stock was opened at 230 and the strike was 245. If you held it all week, though, you made more. But I, you know, that's crazy to do in my opinion. So, but this is the advantage of doing options because you wouldn't want to short this outright and hold it. It could have gone the other way. So that is, uh, that's too much risk. It's, it's unlimited risk essentially. So this is a lot better. And again, if it loses, it loses. And if it wins, it wins. And this was one that won big. 
So again, what is my focus? What am I looking for? When I'm looking for trades, I'm looking for institutional money in the gap. What happened in BA? Well, you can say, well, this thing happened, that thing happened, mechanical failure. Bottom line is people were selling the stock. So it fell. That's the only way it went lower. I mean, that's the only way it could go lower. And people were shorting it like us, okay? And whether you want to do a put or a day trade depends on how long you want to be in the trade and how much money you have to risk to take the trade. If you don't have a margin account, your only option is to do options, okay? And again, you can open up a small account. But again, for overnight moves to capture the glory of this giant move overnight, the best thing was the option. While you could have actually shorted the stock, and that's true, you would have had too much risk to do it. And so again, you can take advantage of what I like to do is to do the day trades and the puts. I like both. I think the strategy is the same, but I think you should get good at doing one. Get good at the day trades, then maybe you can do the options, or get good at the options, start doing that, making money with those, then you can do the day trades. And, and, and again, don't overwhelm yourself trying to do too many things at one time. It can get crazy. You're better off just focusing, 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 because it's all about making money. And, and again, I was talking about this. This was in a webinar last week. I don't think I had it in an email. Maybe I had it in an email. So many people want to make money. That's the whole point. And everybody wants to get rich. I get it. But if you don't have a plan of action to make that happen, no one's going to be ringing your doorbell, you know, from the lottery with a ticket for $100 million. It just doesn't work like that. Okay. You know, what was it? Ed McMahon. <laughs> he used to ring the, uh, the, ring the doorbell with the lottery. You, you have to take steps. I mean, if you could fast forward in time 12 months from now, or even the end of this year, the end of this calendar year, if you could be in a completely different place financially, I'm sure you'd be thrilled, thrilled. But then at the same point, sometimes people are like, oh my God, you know, I've got to learn this. I've got to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. This is going to take forever. No, you know, something doesn't have to take forever. Something doesn't have to take forever at all. So again, it's, you know, it's taking it step by step. It's learning it as you go. And for some people, that's baby steps. For some people, it can happen faster. But I mean, the idea is to take some steps forward for yourself to do it. And I think it's important not to settle for mediocrity. You know, I have so many people that kind of do 50-50 crap shoots where they're, you know, they're trying something that it doesn't work and they try something else and it doesn't work and they make a little money, lose a little money, never really make a lot, never lose a lot. And they're really back and forth break even or basically down. You know, they consider themselves winners by not having big losses, but they're not really getting anywhere with it. So, I mean, you, you decide you want to really do this thing. And this is just my personality is I'm all in when I make my decision and make up my mind to do something. Not everybody is like that. I get it. Some people take time to think about things. But the fact is, if you want to be successful in trading for real, you do have to be all in because there's very few people that are all in and very few people that find success doing this. And so that's just the creme of the creme where you want to be at the top where you have to be all in. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just one of these things. You have to be committed. You have to understand. You have to learn it. And you have to do it. There's far more people that are looking lose about the market that are not serious about trading. And they lose. And then, there, you know, you, of course, you know why they lose. Okay? Because they have no strategy, no set system that they're using to trade. Any questions as I'm going along here? <laughs> I'm trying to look at questions on the side. Anyways, there's no guarantees for trading of the market, but if you are a risk taker, if that's your personality, if you're very independent, if that's your whole, you know, philosophy, you want to work for yourself, you want to do this for yourself, this is your dream, you know, again, you're fine taking your time with it, learning it, then I say go for it. You've got to be focused on your dreams. And we were talking about the beginning of the year, whether it's goals, dreams, whatever you have, the beginning of the year is a chance to start those and start making, taking steps to make them happen. I'm calling these trades, I'm calling these trades a FOA. This here, if you were in the newsletter, you would have gotten this trade. 
people got this trade. People made money in this trade. People made a lot of money. People stayed in it overnight and made it. Some people held it all the way down to the last day, but I didn't. Now they may not have has, had as much size as me. Some people might have had more size than me. I didn't really pull everybody their sizing. And again, this trade I called in the room. So yes, if you're in the live room, you will get these trades. If you're on the newsletter, you will get these trades. But getting back to what I was saying, you need to focus. You need the foundation. You need a foundation to trade. Why are you doing it? I get in a conversation with someone, the first thing I say to them, what's your strategy? Why are you taking the trade? What system are you using? Lots of times people can't even tell me in a sentence. And then right away, I know they don't have any. Or they struggle to state what they're doing. And then I realize that they really don't have one as well. So again, if you don't have a foundation, a strategy, a system you're using to train, you're not going to make money. But the strategy is a core reason behind why you're even watching the stock in the first place or even contemplating an entry or trade in it. An entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade is a foundation for supporting it. The foundation for me is always in the gap. So again, I'm not just shorting BA willy-nilly, okay? The stock has to gap down and it has to rate 20 points or more. And if it does, then I will take it in the direction of the gap. Whether I do a put or whether I do an option, you, sh you could do both. You could do one, okay? And I might do both, and we did do both in that. But again, what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, except for the fact that not every gap down, you can short. Just like not every gap up, can you go long? Not every gap up, do you short? Not every gap down, do you go long? People want to do things like they call gap fills. Well, that doesn't work consistently either, okay? So it's, it's, if it was that easy, like if someone was asking about indicators, then guess what? If it was that easy to just trade using indicators, we'd all have the indicators on. We'd go boop, 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 and we'd say, oh, everything's intersecting, let's do it. Let's go long, let's short it. It's not that simple. Again, there's no magic bullet where you can just plug something in in a computer and then it tells you, do it, do it, do it there. No, it's not that way. When I'm telling you that I teach a system, that's exactly what it is. It's you got to learn it. You got to do it. You got to understand it. And we're looking at a lot of different things. It's not just one thing. It's not just black and white. A lot of traders want to look at things black and white, but I do think that's also human nature. So... Again, if you live in the gray area, you're going to do a lot better off. That's where you're going to get the niche where you're, it's not about black and white. Okay. So we're looking at lots of things. If it was just about one thing, I'd say if the stock is on this moving average, buy it. It would be simple to make money, but it's not like that. Okay. Why do you think I'm looking at 26 things? So there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, which is money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there is a lot of in the market. So there's a lot of people that are in the market, that are trading the market, that actually have a lot of money and are taking big positions. We're not trading penny stocks. We're not trading low float stocks. We're not trading things that are cheap, that have no volume, that are way too spready, or companies that you never heard of and you don't know what they are. We want to be filled in trades, in and out, and we want to be with the institutional money. And so obviously we have to be with things that move. So Boeing is just one example because you're familiar with the company, obviously, but there could be others. You know, Apple, you know, oh, everybody has an iPhone. So we trade stocks that have a lot of volume, okay? And you're going to get filled. You're going to get filled in. You're going to get filled out. Uh, this was this trade we already went over. Here was another trade. This was a different strike and a different day that I called with a lower ticker symbol. This was on Thursday the 11th. I called this was out till Friday the 225s. This was again around 330. This is still a really good price for this stock at this um, you know, strike. And this was a huge trade. This trade was bigger than the last trade. So let's look at the chart. The 11th go back so the 11th was here oh no the 11th was here I'm sorry 
Here I called it, take it to the right. It was right above or at the 225-ish. I called it as close as I could to the strike I could find. Then it dropped, then it fell, and then this was all the profit here, which was Monday. So this was Thursday, this was Friday, and then this was Monday. So that was a trade that you would have taken and you would have held it overnight. If you had three contracts, I mean a three dollar uh, risk, oops, no, I'm on the other one here. 330 risk, four contracts would have been 1320. 658% return on investment and a profit of $8,680. So if you're someone that has a small account, small meaning you know under $10,000, under $5,000, this is how you can build your account up. So this is how you can take a, an account and build it up to have a larger account, to have a margin account at some point, to get up to the 25,000. You have to take quality trades. You have to take good trades. You have to get these calls. And yes, you would have gotten this trade. If you're on the newsletter, I sent it out at 9.41 in the morning. We also did, I sent this one Friday. You wait until the open to do the trade. 8.46, I sent the trade. The market opens at 9.30, the 2.15 Boeings. Again, I saw this trade was going to keep going. I saw this was going to drop. The cost was $1.50, 60 contracts. Risk was 9000 Sold at 15 Again, you could have held this longer. This was the biggest trade we've had so far this year. Hard to believe the first BA wasn't, but this was. It was the price that we paid for this. I was in this trade really, really early. And again, we'll go to the Friday date, which was here on the 12th. So you see where this stock was. I called the 215s. So again, my bias was this was going to keep going here and keep falling. Did I know about the news and the accident it was going to happen and everything over the weekend? No. But I was reading the gap. I was reading the gap. And I said, this is lower. It just so happened that it fell off a planet then on a gap down on Monday and then sold off all day with the news. Again, a smaller size risk would have been just huge money for somebody to be able to take a trade like this, which you would never probably take 800 shares of Boeing at 215 a share with a very small account. You know, you just, when you're, when you're trading on margin, you're also in and out of the day. Now, you could have day traded BA on Friday. You could have day traded BA as well on Monday, okay? Any questions about this? Any questions as I'm going along here? But again, making money trading is fun, but we have to use our brains. The fun part is making money. It's not fun if you lose. And if you're doing, you know, trades for the sake of trading, that's that's not going to get you the, the winnings that you want. You know, a lot of people can get sucked up in the excitement of being in a trade. But if you, if, you don't, if you don't know why you took it, if there's not a reason for you to take it, you're just wasting your time. And chances are you're going to lose. Um, did you contact the broker that I referred you to, Serena? Okay, then I would ask her, because again, you have to tell her how much money you have, and then she'll, she'll tell you what, what type of account to get. But you definitely need a level two. Um, you have to fill out a questionnaire as well about your experience with options at the broker if you open up the account. But if you have under the 25,000, I would do a cash account Otherwise, you're going to get flagged doing options if you don't have it set up as a margin account with 25000 or more. But she will help you through that, and that's why I sent you the referral. And it's getting back to what I was saying is trading isn't gambling, but you want to put the odds in your favor. How do you do that? You do that by making an informed choice before you even take the trade if you even want to do it. It may not be good. Again, it's okay to not do any trades one day. That's okay. Again, the market will be there the next day. Trading isn't gambling. You know, uh, I started watching, it was over the, 
January, it was over the New Year's, there was a Las Vegas marathon. It was, Las Vegas is an old TV show that had a huge cast. Did anyone ever watch it? I'm really dating myself here. This is like 20 years ago. I think it was like 2003 or something. Anyways, I taped them all. It had a marathon. It's a good show. Um, and big cast. And I was, I've been watching them like one every night or something because I didn't have time to watch them all. The guy that was in The Godfather is stars in it. I can't even think of his name now. Oh, the brother in The Godfather stars in this. I'll think of it. Anyways, it's the whole show is about people going to Las Vegas to this casino and then different things happen to them. But it's interesting because you're watching it. You're like, oh, my God, this is what people do. They go and they just gamble and they have fun and that's great. And some people win big, but most lose. Now you say, well, what about the people that go to casinos and they count cards? They count cards. Well, again, I don't know if card counting actually is legal in today's day and age. You know, I've never done it. But I mean, you could, you could say, well, that's a strategy. If you know how to count cards, if it's legal, then you could do it. And that would make sense. But otherwise, deciding red or black, <laughs> you're, it's, it's a 50-50 crapshoot. James Kahn. Thank you, Chris. I can't believe I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> I'm tired. James Kahn. Yeah. Anyways, it's a it's a it's a it's an entertaining show. But I like watching it because obviously I, I'm a, a person that likes to take risk. But interestingly enough, I don't I'm, I don't go to the casinos and I'm not that far from Atlantic City here in New York. But I don't I, I think I went one time to Atlantic City like 25 years ago and I never went to Las Vegas I've never been to Las Vegas ever but I mean could I learn how to count cards because I'm really good with numbers and I'm a fast thinker yes I could but I mean when you watch them as episodes they're trying to get the people that are that are doing things to try to you know basically cheat the casino and it's every every episode is a different story and something happens but most people go into the market on any given day like they're throwing the dice and it could come up a certain way and it could come up a not a certain way. That's not a good way to risk your money. And even if you were someone that was extremely wealthy, if you had $50 million in the bank, why would you, why would you make trading decisions like that? And people always complain and say, well, I don't have enough money and I need more money. If I only had more money, I'd, I'd trade better. No, you wouldn't. If you're gambling now and you have $2,000 in a trading account, you would gamble if you had 200,000, you would gamble if you had 2 million, you would gamble if you had 200 million. <laughs> it's the same philosophy. If you had a lot of money and you know what to do, you can, you can increase your wealth. If you have a small amount of money and you know what to do, you can increase your wealth too. Because again, trades like this are the exact kind of trades that people that have small accounts need to put them over the 25,000 that they can start really hammering. And if you're someone that has a large account, if you can make 80 some thousand dollars on a trade, guess what? You can start to increase your risk as well per trade, or you could be more active and you could do more trades. You could take more trades. You know, if I'm calling five strikes in BA, maybe you're not doing them all, you know, but you could if you have a bigger account. Anyways, I use one strategy daily to stay consistent. It's the consistency, consistency, consistency. It's the 26-point golden gap rating system. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do and what you're going to learn from me if you do the class. The class is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time, and we go over all the points on Saturday. I go over them. You learn them. Again, this is not black and white. You have to go through and go through the checklist and then then you total the tally it all up, okay? It's not like just looking at one moving average and saying that's a short. It's not like that, okay? It's a process, and that's why I get up early in the morning and do it. But the rating system tells me where the momentum is headed. Is it heading down? Is it heading up? Again, I find that shorting really gives me a niche, plus I like the fast trades. It just so happens that the last couple of days, <laughs> I feel like the trades have been taking longer. For example, even something like the DFS. But that's okay. I'll, I'll get in a trade. I'll give it a chance to go and work. 
I'm hoping we get a fast one tomorrow. I don't know what it will be. Maybe Netflix will be a fast one when we get it this week. We'll see. Anyways, this was not last week's. This was two weeks ago, the trades. I'm going to quickly go over these here. We shorted BA. I took a stop in this on the 8th. I got in this. I got stopped here. Then I retook BA later in the day, had the sell-off, made money. This was a big trade, but this was an afternoon trade. Then on the 9th, I did BA. Again, this is a trade where I enter it, put the stop, take the trade on margin with a set share size. I am calling these trades live in the room. You would have gotten these trades if you were in the room. We shorted it here, got the drop out done. That was a fast one. Then we didn't do any trades on the 10th. The 11th, we shorted Tesla. Again, this was a day trade. I call the trade in the room. I'm saying 60 by 60. You have to know where we're doing it, what we're doing. You have to know we're doing Tesla. I have the chart up. I'm only doing one thing at a time. You gotta follow me, get your chart up, get it in the level two, get it in the ticker symbol, get your size ready. And then you short it. Risk was 3,300. This was a nice move though. Again, I'm looking for a quick, fast move. So again, this was the 11th, which was Thursday. And then we also, oh, we also did BA this day too. So I don't always do two things in one day, but we did do this. 225.90 was the entry for the BA. Exit was 223.25. This was a nice trade. This was a bigger than the Tesla. Again, got in, got the drop, got out. Still done before lunchtime with this. 60 by 60 means the first entry is the first number is the entry, second one's a stop. If I'm calling BA, Scott, then again, you're new, but the first number is the entry, second one's a stop. If I say 90 by 50, you're entering it at 90, putting the stop at 50. And again, you're always putting the stop above the number if we're shorting, which we are most of the time. Now, if I go long, I will say we are going long. We want long JPM. In this case here, you're entering the stop is underneath the entry. In this case, 20 by 50 is how I call this trade. So you say, okay, 174.20 minus 173.50 is what? You have to know that's 70 cents. That's how you're sizing yourself, okay? So 1,000 shares would have been what? $700. Again, you would have entered this here, got the push, we got out. We had, we had a great exit on this. Actually, if we had held this, we would have got stopped. My target really was 175 and a push over it, and we got it. This was a big trade, though. But again, active trading, momentum, day trading. Look at this. We got in it, got the move, got out, done. We were done in five minutes. But this was a long. we usually short, but I just want to show you. This was the best trade to do that day. For the gaps, this was earnings as well. I don't think there was any good shorts that day, actually. That was a good question, Scott. Anybody else? So, again, when I say chunk it out, I mean chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. Take the trade, get the move, get out. Take the trade, get the move, get out. Take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it. This isn't about long-term investing. You're not pretending you're Warren Buffett here. If you're doing an option, it has an expiration date. You got to get the move, get out. If you're doing a day trade, you got to get out of that thing by four o'clock. Again, I prefer to get out of the morning very, very quickly. Um, Serena, you have to go back and total all those up. I have the stats in here. I am taping this. So after I upload this on YouTube, I can send it to you. You can go back and watch this video again. Um, but anyways, this wasn't really last week. This was two weeks ago, but we did have a good week last week. So how did I know a BA or Tesla would fall? I rated the gap. I rated the gap. I rated the gap. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and rate the gap. Again, we'll look at UAL tonight. That would be a long, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but before we're done here, I will look at that. I use a 26 point checklist. It tells me what to trade and what to look for each day. And that's how I know what to do it. And if I don't get the rating, I don't do it. And that's, it's not that hard to follow rules. It really, really isn't. The problem is people don't have any rules. <laughs> so that's, you know, buying something on a moving average is not amazing. I mean, I, I, buying something on a moving average is not hard. That's, that's not the way to make money, okay? In fact, you're gonna lose doing that because it doesn't work all the time. If you went long today, it probably was a crapshoot.
because the market was up today, rallied and failed. Friday was different. Friday, we had a power trend day. So probably everything worked to the upside today. So again, most things go on any given day with the market, unless you're reading the market gap correctly every day or the trading, how the market's going to go all day, even in the gap, which sometimes the market gaps reverse. You're going to have a difficult time making money if you don't get the market right every day. And even I don't get the market right every day. Some days I do, some days I don't. Some days I don't, I don't even do anything with the market. I'm amazing. Thank you, Serena. I've been doing this a long time, okay? I started trading in 2008. I appreciate your comments, but I really, really, really am uh, someone that is very analytical in my thinking and my process. That's how I came up with this whole thing to begin with. And then on top of that, I'm extremely focused with what I do every day. Um, that's one of the reasons like I have the chat blocked off. People would have conversations in rooms when I started out, when I was trading, They'd be talking about politics, talking about that. Hey, we're here to make money. That's the point. That's, we, got, we don't have that much time to make it either. And everybody should be focused on that. But I mean, you know, I realized a long time ago that there was, people were jacks of all trades and masters of none. And the whole point of making money was to get really, really good at something. That also has given me a sixth sense or, you know, basically I've gained an edge with that where I have an intuition about certain things. And that's the benefit of being in the live room with, with me because I have an intuition. And you're, that's something that it will take you time to learn and hone in on your own intuition. But if you don't stick on and stay with one strategy, you're never going to get that intuition. But the benefit of being in the room is if you listen to what I'm saying, you go with what I'm saying with the intuition part when I'm saying something. Uh, what are the required hours per week for someone working on average? And is it the same day after day? Do I trade any events pre-market like the CPI? I do not trade the pre-market. That is when I'm doing the work in the ratings. So if I'm actually entering a train, Zahir, then I'm not doing the ratings. I, I see the economic data and the market may gap up or down on news events. That's true. They usually come out at 830 in the morning and then I see what's happening. And then maybe the market is gapping, and it usually does. Again, whether it gaps up or gaps down, I'm watching it. To trade those moves is very risky because, again, you have no stop. You have no stop. You're also, you can't do options in the pre-market or post-market, and then you're trading on no margin as well or two-to-one margin, and you also aren't doing the pre-work to see what's going to happen. But I do look at that, and I do rate it, and that helps me determine then what's going to happen on the live day. You know, waiting till 8.30, you're not going to, I mean, 9.30, you're not going to miss out. Wait for the open. You're not going to do any better if you don't enter something. Again, this would have to be a trade on cash or, or two to one margin. You're not going to make any more at 8.45 if you get in something near 8.30. In fact, you could lose because something could completely flip and reverse. I mean, I see that happen all the time. <laughs> I literally see it happen constantly. So use the information in the pre-market to rate the gap, to do your homework, to make the picks and decide the direction for the stocks you want to trade to the market. Wait till the open. It's a lot better. It's confirmed then. Because if you're trading in the morning, you're just trading what? The trend? The, the stock hasn't opened yet. For all you know, it may not even gap. Do you know what I'm saying? So we're trading the gap. I've seen things gap down at 830 and then all of a sudden flip and all of a sudden they're gapping up. What if you short it and then it flips or the vice versa? I mean, all of that stuff is happening. The morning is very wild. You're going to look at that stuff to help you decide what to do, but you're not trading that. Okay. Um, as far as hours per day, if you're trading in the morning, the morning is open. We trade usually between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. As far as doing options, I'm sending the trades out. Most of the trades pretty early. Pretty early in the pre-market or right into the open. When you get the email, you can take the trade. You can put a sell order. You don't have to watch the trade. Now, if you want to watch the trade and see where it's going and look at the targets, then you can check them at lunch. Check them before the close. <laughs> but if you're busy or you're doing an operation or something, Zaire, then you put a sell order. So, I mean, you can buy it, pay $3. I, 
I'd put a sell order at 450, 50%. 50 if it gets you out, you're up. If you can watch it and you say, wow, this is really good. It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. I'm going to come back and check it before four. Then you can do that. I give the targets in the newsletter. Or you could buy it at three and put a sell order at six. What if it doesn't hit? What if it doesn't hit at all? It doesn't go to six. It goes to 375. Then you're in it. You're in it overnight. You're in it to the next day. You're in the train. It's a day order. It will cancel out. You get up the next morning. You see where the stock's gapping. You can put another day sell order if you can't watch what's going on. So I think there's less time involved if you're going to trade options. You don't have to be as sitting at your screen between 930 and 10. But if you're day trading, you do have to be there on the open. Okay. But if you check your email in the morning, you, that's when you're going to get most of the options trades. You can at least set up the orders. You can at least get the orders on even if you're not sitting there and you, or you can't be there. But the key to getting big trades is momentum. When I trade, I'm looking for momentum. This gives me an edge, just like BA, just like Tesla, just like the DFS. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learn how to take a position in a stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. That's what you need. We did a long recently with NVIDIA. It had an explosive move. These enormous moves happen in one direction and happen very fast. Momentum trading can be very, very profitable. So again, what creates the momentum in the gap? It's institutional money. People are buying it, people are selling it. There are, there are gaps that happen every day. Some gaps are nothing gaps. Some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market, though, are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction, and that's the ones you want to play. So understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you because if, you, if you're trading on the side of institutional money, it's very easy to make money. If you're against it, you're gonna struggle, it's gonna be hard. That's where most people end up scalping. <coughs> they say, well, I'm scalping this because they're really going against it. Like people were scalping NVIDIA for a short. That was crazy. I said that the last time I did a webinar. And I said NVIDIA was higher. At that time, the stock, I think, was at 570. And then it ran up over 600. Institutional money was buying that stock. And then people were trying to scalp it short. And that was crazy. So the 26 points tell you that an institution is going to buy it or sell it. Um, <coughs> Serena, we'll talk about that more in the class. I know you already signed up. I don't pay for an extra scanner, but you can. Um, the whole, yes, Afua, you are correct. This means the whole key to this is based on the 26 checklist. That's right. You've got it. Again, that's the strategy. That's the system. Exactly. Because otherwise, again, what are you making the basis of the decision on? Like I said, you can't short every gap down. You can't go long every gap up. You can't do the reverse, which people do. They want to do gap fills. Again, if it was that easy to trade, no one would ever lose. You can get up and see a gap. If you say, I'm going to short every gap down, okay, good luck. You're going to lose. It's not going to work. So the whole point of FUA is getting the rating. And if I get up in the morning and if I rate, I don't know, 10 things, I've got more things that don't meet the criteria that do. Do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so that's, that's the whole point. That's the whole niche. Anyways, a big flow of money going a certain direction is what moves the market stocks and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. And when you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power. And that's where the points are telling you. They're, they're saying we're directing the power in this direction. We're in control of the stock. Who's in control? The bears are in control or the bulls are in control. If the bulls are in control, like the bulls are in control of NVIDIA, the stock's going to move higher and you don't want to short that thing come hell or high water. If the bears are in control, well, then you want to short it or if you're long, you want to sell it. You don't want to buy it. Follow me? <clears throat> so you want to be with that control. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. Okay. 
And that's, you know, that's what I caution people when they're doing all kinds of crazy scalping things. Now, can you do this if you're a beginner? Yes, sure you can. You can learn from the nuts and bolts from ground up. Will it take you longer? Will it be shorter? Again, some people are trading for a long time and they have really terrible habits. And so somebody that's a beginner may do better than someone that's been trading for a long time with bad habits. There's no, you know, rhyme or reason why somebody picks it up, does the class, and then just does well right away. Some people go through a learning process. It's up to you. But I think the support of the trading room and getting my trade calls on the newsletter really helps you to make money. Because the only way you didn't make money on like those Boeing trades is you didn't do those trades. That's the only way you didn't make money in those trades. Everybody made huge money in those trades if, unless you didn't do them. I mean, so, I mean, you're going to get trades like this on the letter with me, but I don't know when the next big one is. But I absolutely do call trades like this. It could be this week. It could be Netflix. I don't know. Who knows? I'm not getting Netflix open for the earnings. Anyways, this was Tessa. Again, I called a day trade in Tessa today. Tessa was a good call. Tessa has been falling. Tessa has earnings this week. But I called the 230 puts. Again, you could have shorted this. 575 wasn't cheap, but I don't think this is crazy. Again, this is an expensive stock too. If you bought two contracts and spent 1150, you could have made two grand. That's a good trade. That's an excellent trade. It's almost 200%. Again, if you can't watch this Sayer, if you're doing something, you buy it. I would put a sell order at 12. See if you get filled. Okay? And, and that's what you do. Now, if you can watch it, again, I have the targets in the letter. Here, here was the Tesla today. So what day was that? Let me see. That was the 11th. So stock closed here, gap down. Again, I called the put, dropped, boom, fell. You could have got out of the trade here. You could have got out of the trade here. You could have actually been in this to the last day. I was not. You could have. I want to show you where it went. Again, this was the 230s. This was the 19th. The stock was down under 210. So yeah. Even when this backed up here, this was still up, which is crazy even with that backup. I also called the 220s on Friday the 12th. These were a lot cheaper. Again, nice trades. So on the Friday the 12th, here was the gap. So here I called the 220s. It was a little bit under it, right at it, ran up, dropped, gap down the next day, fell, boom. Again, anywhere in here you gotta get out. Anywhere in here you're getting out, the stock fell. This was a nice trade, could you have held it longer? Yes, this was a nice trade. Could you have held it longer? Yes. You can't hold everything forever. And it wasn't like we held those BAs forever. The gap was sizable and we were ready in the trade and then it could plunked. Um, Michael is saying, do I call him to get out? No, because I am not managing your account and there are many trades that I get out of myself and they keep going. These trades I got out of and these trades kept going. And I don't want people to come back at me and say, you know, you told us to get out, it kept going. The other reason I don't do that is because it's too much like managing your account. You have to manage your own account. But I do put targets in the letter. And if you want to get out of the targets, then you get out of the chart targets. But if you can't watch, then you have to put a sell order. Your goal in every trade should be to try to make 100%. But I think 50% is okay because it's an active letter. And if you're worried about holding too long, 50% is still a good profit. You will still get some of these big trades if you're holding them overnight because they're going to go more than 50%. The other reason I don't call exits is why. There's really nothing to manage if the trade hasn't gone. There are people on the newsletter that kill the trades. I don't do that. I don't kill these. If I rated this gap and I called a put in it, I like it. There's nothing that it's going to do that's going to make me change my mind. And there are people that are killing the trades. In other words, if I call a trade and it goes and flips, they kill it. I don't do that. Now, if the trade goes on to work in the week that I called it and I make money in it, they missed out. So again, I'm not tightly managing these. Some people don't like that. They want to be tight with them. I had a guy, and I don't have this trade in here, I called calls at AMD. It was a really good trade last Thursday. The trade was down. It fell. 
Friday it was up and it ran up like a rocket. One of the guys took the trade Thursday, killed it when it went negative, got in it Friday, got out of it too fast, got in it again, held it to today. I mean, he, I didn't call any of that nonsense. I called one trade Thursday and it went on Friday. So again, I'm not like in out, in out, in out, in out, in out a million trades. So that, you know, I'm just, you take the trade and you make it easy for yourself and lower your risk so that you can let it play out. And when the trade goes and the momentum goes, you get out. Again, just like this BA. I, I don't know what I could have made in this because I, I, I honestly, I didn't want to go back and I just don't do that to myself. This trade here, um, this original one. Here, this trade. Okay, the 245s. I could have stayed in this till here. I don't know what more I would have made. I, maybe I would have doubled my money. I don't, I don't go back and do that to myself. I don't go back and look at something and scold myself. And no one should do that. This was a fabulous call and a fabulous trade. And I actually know that some people did hold some down. Now, I thought that was crazy because again, how can you not get out of this here? I mean, you, you, you can't look a gift horse in the mouth is how I put it when you get a big trade. Um, what do you mean no technical analysis? What do you mean? We are using technical analysis. These are, that's what charts are. I don't understand your question, Afua. My loss is my risk. And if the trade goes bust, it goes bust. That's right. That's right. But that's what I do. And that's what I'm telling you I do if you want to do it like me. And you're going to have more winners if you do that. Now, again, the guy I'm talking about. I think he, he doesn't want to have any losses. He doesn't want to hold something overnight that's down. So that's, that's his choice. But then he's going to miss the winners. So, you know, if the trade, if he kills it with a loss and it goes on to work, then he's going to miss the big winners. But he's going to have less losses per amount because he'll kill something if it's down 20%. And if it doesn't work and the trade goes bust by Friday, I'll lose 100% in it. Like, I'll ride it out into the Friday. But I do have targets in the letter. And Michael, you can email me. I'll send you one of the letters that shows all the targets in the letter. I don't have them in here. But if you want to email me, I can send that to you to show you the full letter. Um, but if, I don't know what you mean. We are using technical analysis. This is technical analysis. Technical analysis is looking at the past price data to predict future price data. We're looking at the daily chart. And I'm predicting that this thing's going to fall or this thing's going to rally. And I'm doing it based on the daily chart. So yes, that is what technical analysis is. Let me know you understand that. So in the case of Tesla, again, this was, you could have done a million trades in this, puts, options, whatever you wanted to do, day trades. When this stock closed here and gapped down, it fell. I was predicting this stock was lower. And I was right. Again, I forget the reason that this gap even occurred. It was a while ago. But it doesn't matter. Okay. Anyways, one of my edges is shorting, but it also is seeing the momentum before the move occurs. Seeing that something like NVIDIA is going to keep going higher or Boeing is going to keep going lower. But for me, it's the shorting is what I love. The fast trades, the short trades, the big moves to the downside is definitely what I'm trying to capture as many days as I possibly can. And again, when somebody is in something and they panic and sell it, it's going to push the stock down. A lot of people panic in the market. You rarely see panic buying. You, you're sort of seeing that a little bit actually in NVIDIA because it's just going like gangbusters. But you do see panic selling constantly, all the time, every day. Every day there's panic selling. So to not focus on shorting, people really miss out. And again, for some reason, retail traders prefer to go long because they just they can wrap their head around what a long is. Buying low and selling high, you know. But again, I'd rather buy something when it's confirmed. 
I may not get the best price in it, but I want to get it where I know it's going to go. Like we didn't get in NVIDIA at the earliest price we could have gotten, but I got in it and a confirmed entry and then we made money. So again, if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players, okay, before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to trade with a side of power. It's very, very important because if you go against it, you're going to lose. If you go with it, you're going to win. And it's not going to be that hard to win if you go with it. Does it mean the trade is going to go the second that you take it? No. No, it may not. But if you believe in the gap and you understand the rating system and you believe in the institutional money and the power, then you'll let the trade play out like we were talking about with the options or even the day trades. And again, the market has the ability to pay you. I think people generally who have traded and if you've made money in the market, you understand that. And whether you take small size or big size has to do with the size of your account, which you must respect. You must respect yourself enough to respect your position and how much money you have to risk. Because if you don't, you're going to be upside down and you'll burn yourself. Know that you can grow your account. Maybe there'll be baby steps. Maybe it'll be one big BA trade, okay? But if you're too heavy handed, that's not gonna do you or anybody any good, okay? The least stress you can give yourself, the better you're gonna trade. One of the reasons I get up early is I don't wanna be stressed. I don't wanna have to scan on the open. I like to know ahead of time what I wanna do way before 9.30. If I don't like anything or I don't know what to do, then that's stressful. A lot of people are like scanning for like the first half an hour, an hour of the day. They don't even know what they're going to do. Anyways, how do I read the power of money? In gaps. And again, I use the checklist. But the checklist is looking at technical analysis in the daily chart. Okay. And we're looking at one thing a day, preferably. Whether you do an option, whether you do a day train. Some days I do both. Okay. <coughs> And again, the options you can hold overnight and get the larger moves. The day trades, we get the quick moves, the fast moves. If you want to focus on one strategy to be effective and efficient, then you have to hone it down. So the whole, again, nuts and bolts of what I do is I'm looking every day to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves on the day. Number three, early confirmation of my bias and the move between 9.30 and 10. And number four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. Because I really, if I have that risk to reward, then I feel like it's worth taking the trade. If I have the rating, if it's 20 points or more, and the higher the rating, the better the gap. If I get one that rates 24 points, that's a better gap than one that rates 20 points. Uh, you mean, do you have to learn how to apply technical analysis on your own if you're doing this on your own? If you sign up for the class of FUA, you're going to learn from me how to do it. If you sign up for the class and then you're trading in the room, you will take the trade calls as I call them. If you sign up and you learn the class, you will learn how to do it yourself. But the whole idea of being with me is that I help the support helps you at the beginning. And with the newsletters, again, I'm supportive of people with the newsletters because I'm making the calls. It's right there in the newsletter what to do. Buy the BA put or you know, buy the NVIDIA call. If you want to get out of it with a 20% profit, that's up to you. I'm telling you, try to look for 100%. Try to follow the targets. I think 50% though is okay, just because it's an active letter. And if you want to get out of trades and kill them early, again, that's not the way that I'm playing them, but you will you will save yourself from trades that I lose in if you do that, for sure. I don't know if that answers your question. And let me know if anybody else has any other questions. Anyways, we're looking to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, which is the one minute, which is a high level degree of accuracy and focus. Again, I'm calling these trades fast in the room. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction. And using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades with accuracy. So again, it's the 26 points tells me what to look at. I make the decision, I rate it in the pre-market. Then the market opens and I take the trade. I can take it as a day trade. I can take it as an option. I'm not trading in the pre-market. I do the work then, 
Okay, I do the rating system then. I rate as many things as I need to till I find something to do. Okay, and again, checklist works. It, they, they work for anything that you do. I mean, do you want a doctor operating on you if they didn't go through the checklist? You know, you go in to have surgery, they ask you questions. Mr. Smith, did you not eat anything since three o'clock yesterday? Did you not drink anything since two o'clock this morning? They go through the checklist because if they don't answer the questions right, they're not getting the surgery. Okay. You have to be responsible for yourself and your actions, responsible with your money. And that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Actually, you should, you, you want to take care of yourself. You want to take care of your account. You want to take care of your money. You want to grow it. So a checklist is a plan of action. You're double, triple checking yourself. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high income career field specialists have checklists. What if you're an accountant? It's tax season. Tax season right now, my father's a CPA. So you gotta follow the checks, you gotta follow the rules, you gotta go through everything. The 26 point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility to trade. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. And then you won't think of trading as a crapshoot or gambling. And hopefully you won't do crazy things. That you stay on track with the gap. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in the chart and a stock to make the correct decision. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias. And having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. So again, the gap's the event. You don't, you're not predicting the gap. You let it, let it gap. You say, okay, there it is. Now you rate it and then you wait for the setup. So what if it doesn't set up? Well, guess what? Then you're not doing it. <coughs> so you may rate it. It may look great and then it never triggers. Okay. So again, the whole point is you want to trade with that institutional money. And so you've got to wait for the live day. But again, I love the shorts. I think they move fast. Whether you want to buy the put, whether you want to short the stock, that's up to you. So I teach the class. The class is this weekend for January, first class of the year. The Golden Gap course teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And this is an investment. My class is an investment. You're investing in yourself and your trading education because you want to do it. You want to learn it. You want to get good. And you want to get some value out of the education. So many people pay for classes and they don't get anything out of them. <laughs> it's like, and then they take trades and they're bad trades and the trades lose. So they lost the money in the class and lose the money in the trades. You, you really have to be thoughtful what you're spending your money on nowadays because you want to get the value out of it. I bought new furniture last year. I hadn't bought new furniture for more than 10 years. I, I don't have kids or pets, so my furniture lasts a long time and is in good condition. But I did buy expensive furniture. And I knew that if I bought good furniture, that this furniture now will last at least 10 years or more too. So, I mean, again... I'm investing in the furniture because I know that if I buy good furniture, it's not going to break. It'll last through another move. You know what I mean? So it's you have to look at things that way when you're deciding what you want to spend your money on. But it's the same thing with trades. It's the same thing with trades. I mean, you want to take the trade and invest in it. Like when we're doubling up on some of these positions or doing an ad or doing multiple strikes in the options and puts where we're taking BA all the way down. I'm loving the gap if I'm doing that. So it, it, it's worth it, okay? So empower yourself today to train. You will learn a complete system to use to trade. It's all the parts of the puzzle and the pieces of the puzzle that you need to get the bigger picture of what you wanna do and where the chart's gonna go. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course in how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You could be anywhere in the world, in the world and take it. And I do have people signed up. If you are interested in signing up, I was doing a special through Sunday. I extended it to give people more time to sign up. You have until Friday. The class is Saturday and Sunday, though. You must sign up by Friday. You can start trading tomorrow if you sign up today. 
with the special. The first class of the year special is a good one. Again, this ends though on Friday. It will give you the trading room free to the end of the year, the newsletter free to the end of the year for the option subscription, which everyone loves, and then the market report to the end of the year. So this is going on through Friday. If you sign up now, you can start trading with us tomorrow. You can get the trades. Any questions from anyone? And I know some of you are already signed up. And Serena, you should come in tomorrow to the room to test the login, make sure you know what you're doing. Any other questions from anyone about anything? If you want to sign up, email me. If you have questions, email me. Michael, if you want to see what the options newsletter looks like with the targets, email me. Afua, did you understand uh, the answers to your questions about technical analysis? I have no idea what we're doing tomorrow, but I'll get up in the morning and look. Uh, Zaire, I know you're interested. I don't know if you have any other questions. Uh, you need a computer if you're talking about that. You can have a laptop, you can have a desktop. Uh, a few did that answer question. All right, let's quickly look at since we're 